Hello and welcome to Logan Sounds Off. Today I am interviewing Peter Baxter. Peter, how are you? Oh, got a mouthful of water there. I'm great, thank you. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Um, thank you so much for joining me on my podcast today. It, Thanks for asking. I, I was so happy when you um, popped me a message and said that you were going to have an interview with me today. Um, but for those who don't know you, um, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm... Uh songwriter and and performer and i've been working at that my passion for a long time a long long time and uh, my main kind of work would be in education and i work in creative digital media arts and music that would be my my uh my my, my nine to five really well it's actually more like eight till eight uh, it's like it's a passion I do it all the time but it combines I'm so lucky I get to play music all the time and, and and do it for a living through that well that's you're living the dream then if you like living music and play music yeah. that's brilliant so you. there you've got a probably you've got a big background in music so I wanted to ask about that what inspirations did you have growing up uh, probably like you I love music loved music uh i didn't start playing till i was much older and i started playing when i was maybe 20 and my dad had just got an accordion so i'm from an irish family and my dad you know used to always sing and i'd sing with him and he uh he said if i learned guitar to help me keep in tune which is true and it did uh, and so i used to play with him that, that that's how i got started but i did music at school wasn't very good. Played the flute. Mm, wasn't really my thing. I love me. I love Fair enough. songs. Yeah. Fair enough. And um, would you play guitar now? And you're very I good do. at guitar. Thank you. So you started off with the flute and instruments like that, and now you're playing guitar and you're really yeah. enjoying that. And that's that's I think find very interesting that I speak to a lot of people about how they started with their career, and it's always those kind of instruments. Uh-huh. that you start off with um but obviously you're now a musician mm-hmm. and you have some very cool music and some <laughs> music that you have to do a lot of research for and um, so I want to ask where do you get your inspiration from from life I try and make uh I try and uh, reflect life of my life in the music Does that makes sense so you yeah can- definitely I love history. I love history. So I'm really interested in songs about things and places and people and times. And then just uh, I read a lot, watch a lot of films, all kinds of places you get an inspiration from. Wow. And that, that actually, you're saying you draw a lot of kind of your inspiration from history mm-hmm. and life and people. And I find music like that my favorite type of music because I love music that tells a story and has a meaning behind it. Yeah. And you had a song called Pamela White, which I'm going to yep. talk about in a bit. But do you find with your music your roots inspire you? Yes, 100 percent That that was something that I really was thinking, wow, that's that because that, that's going to have a really it's it can be an odd question for some people because some people draw their music in different ways. But for some of the music that you create, I was kind of confused on whether you do or you don't. So I was I was really interested to see. So thank you so much for answering that. But back to your song, Pamela White, what inspired you to write that? Because that is a fantastic song. Thank you. Uh, I wrote that. Now, I, I went to school in Australia. So I moved to Australia when I was in first class. So I went... 99% of my schooling was in Australia for primary and secondary school. And so I loved history and I loved learning about the history of the country. But most of the history we learned about was about white settlement. So in 1770, Captain Cook discovered Australia. And 1788, uh, the English sent out the first fleet. And so it was populated and settled by... Irish, uh, it was uh, British soldiers and Irish convicts. And that's how the official story of Australia started. But 
I was always interested in the other story, the story of the indigenous people that lived there because they'd been there for 60,000 years, but the story wasn't really yeah. recorded and we didn't learn it at school. It's different now, kids do, but I was just interested. So you go on a journey of self-discovery. I read books, there wasn't a whole lot out there, but you meet people, you, you talk to indigenous kids I went to school with, um, traveled a bit around Australia, that kind of stuff. So you, you, you learn. Uh, you've, and it's an oral history, Aboriginal, Indigenous Australian history is oral. So uh, you need to talk to people and hear the stories. So that's how I did it. That's how I learned. That, that is the perfect answer. And then for <laughs> those who don't know about Pamela Lloyd, the person or the song by yep. Peter Baxter, you should listen to the song and you should find out about Pamela Lloyd. He's got a very, very nice history. Um, though he was assassinated in 1802, if you start right. to research into him. Yeah. Um, but you kind of had to sign to a couple of record companies mm -hmm. and start. So how did you find setting up your own record company, Jamaru Records? Because I was very interested when I heard you had your own label. For your music. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of musicians would. So the first label I signed to was an independent punk label in Sydney. And they were great. They, they were all about... Uh, just giving people a start and I, I, my first record did pretty well but they were very much of the uh, of the feeling but there's some good labels like that that would help you start off and if you can get signed somewhere else or if you get a publishing deal you are able to uh, to go basically so uh, the next record I nearly got signed the usual thing with record companies you get promised deals and they don't happen but in the end, I just said, uh, to heck with this, I'll do it myself. And so that's how I set up the record label. And it's called Jimaroo. Yeah. So that was, uh, it sounds indigenous, but it's not. My it, It's a class name, Jimaroo, by the way. Class name. Do you know yeah. where it comes from? I don't, uh, actually. I really don't. <laughs> You'll never guess. Uh, my parents used to breed dogs. They bred okay. uh, in Ireland. They bred a... Uh, a type of dog called an Airedale terrier. It's uh, it's it's the biggest of terrier dogs. So it's brown and and uh, black, and it's a huge big dog. So it it'd be very big then, yeah. I was, yeah, really yeah. big, bigger than a Lakeland, bigger than uh, it's the biggest of all terrier dogs. So they bred this, and the show name they had was Jimaru Sidekick, which was a horse in the Grand National. I don't know, somewhere, and Dad said, oh, that's a good name. So he, he gave that as the kennel name, which then I always thought was very funny, and I thought that would be a great name for a record label, but it sounds so different. So I've kept that as an independent label, and I just, yeah, that's what I still use. I mean, that is, like, some people would go to great lengths <laughs> to find a proper logo and a proper yeah. name and everything, going on to, like, uh, name kind of generators are looking for ages and ages for that perfect name. You just speak Jim Maru, and yeah. it was a perfect name. It's cool. that is one of the yeah. best record label <laughs> names I have heard, like in a very long time, if not ever. That is amazing. Thank that you. is really really cool. And <laughs> you've you've climbed the ladder being a musician from you started off busking. And then you be you um started to have gigs and you started gigging. So I have to ask, do you have any favorite venues? Yeah. Um, where's a great venue? There's loads. I was in Australia last year and I played a couple of really nice little venues in Melbourne and Sydney. One's called um one's called the Gasoline Pony. It's it's kind of a bar, but it's really nice. And there's another one in Melbourne called the Merry Creek Tavern, which is really good. And the room is is lovely. Uh, where else? It's those little places. Yeah, those lovely. kind of bars and mm. things in the corner of nowhere that are just amazing, that there's yeah. nowhere else like, yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, loads of great little places. The places you often haven't heard of can, can be great. Sometimes the big venues, they're not as fun to play. But sometimes they yeah. are. Yeah. Well, like, mm. I mean... There's a lot of little, small, little places that I know of. But, I mean, if I was to pick a venue, I'd pick one of them over some massive stadium. Yeah. Like, I mean, I feel nervous in the massive stadium, so that's one reason why I picked a small <laughs> little kind of town bar or something. But, no, I see where you're coming from. There's, it's always like that original kind of little bar that you yeah. always feel very homely in. 
yeah, that that can really kind of ease the nerves and also be easy to play at. Um, so you seem very experienced then in the in the music music side of everything. Um, so I have to ask, do you have any tips for musicians? Yeah, that what are would trying I to get started. You play as much as you can is often the best way, I think. And busking is great. Busking is um, is a really good way if you have time to do it to start to learn how to uh, interact with people and how to gauge people because people are coming and going and they're all very busy generally. But to to uh, watch and observe how people react to music, I think that's really interesting sometimes. And if you do it overseas, it's interesting because they don't understand necessarily what you're singing about, which is also interesting from a psychology psychological point of view to know to kind of look at people and look at body language and find out what what they connect with. That's really, uh, that's good. So the more you do it, the more, well, you never get, not get nervous, um, but the more you do it, the more comfortable it is, I reckon. So play, play as much as you can. That's such a good way of looking at being a musician because that, that's something that I've heard a lot, play, 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 and practice, practice, practice. Mm. And that is very important. But I love what you said about the reaction. Mm. And knowing that people like your music, and that can be very nice. So or not. That, so, <laughs> that, so that's something that, if any kind of upcoming musicians or people who are trying to get by being a musician, that's food for thought now. Yeah. Just think about the reaction. Um. But that that was very, very interesting. Actually, the answer for that is not what I expected. I expected a good answer now. Uh, that would that that really now has changed my look on busking and stuff. Um, yeah, in the wrong place, but sorry. but also play with. Um, I, I I'd also say wherever possible, play with people who you know are better musicians than you. Often people think I'm not good enough to play with people, but uh, you are. So play with with good musicians, and you'll improve. That is another. God, you're you're blowing my mind here, Peter. Do you want to get through the interview? Sorry. Wow. <laughs> wow, though. Like, how, yeah, how are you going to get better? You're going to have to play with those musicians. 100%. Learn. Learn that something. is a very good way of thinking. That is actually probably like, I've talked to a lot of people like John Kelly and Pat Carty and people like that who can literally write a book on philosophy. And you're now added to the list of those people who can write a book on philosophy and a new way of thinking. Like, you could rewrite Atomic Habits, a book like that by James Clear and stuff. One of those kind of things on new ways of thinking. That's really intelligent of you to say, and I can see where you're coming from. Thank but I would like to shift gears to something else. Okay. You are also the founder and director of Create School. Yep. So I wanted to ask, where did the idea come from for Create School? Because it's uh, a brilliant idea. If anybody doesn't know um, what Create School is, it's a school that was founded, directed here by Peter, as I just said, but um, it teaches children about audio, video, music and stop motion animation production. It's very interesting, but sorry, Peter, continue. Okay. Yeah, we're, 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 we call it school, but it's not really a school as such. We, we have an office, but we're not a physical building per se. We go into schools or we do it online. And I suppose the idea is to uh, really, it would be in the non-formal space. So it's more about learning and cre creativity would be what we we really focus on and whether it's a podcast or a or a film or a song or a, an animation that's just the vehicle you you use to tell the story so uh creativity storytelling how did i get started i was touring the outback in australia with a guy uh, aboriginal and indigenous songwriter called archie roach who, who was a brilliant guy and uh i was on this tour and i thought stories are great and Archie always told stories and people love a story and I thought well I'm from an Irish family and we were always big on stories this whole idea of a, an Anshanaki and and I thought you know it's interesting I wonder if 
I could get all these songs together and then go into schools. That's basically how it started. And I collected all these songs. I wrote to famous people and got them. And we did a little record label, a record, and I put a CD out. And then I thought it'd be great to go into schools and do workshops and get other people to write their stories as songs. And that's roughly how it happened. Then I moved back to Ireland and then went into a school and somebody said, that's a great idea. And it kept going, kept going, kept going. And then it just grew. And then we thought, well, we could do the same thing with the film. We did the same thing with the podcast or whatever. But that's how it started from. That, so it kind of just grew that it was, I see this a lot. And this happens for a lot of things. You have the block and then you yeah. have the extensions that you're putting on the block. That yeah. it's always kind of building outwards like a tree with its roots. So that's, that's, I really like the idea of Create School because a lot of the students in Create School um, must love to be able to be there to talk about, to their peers especially, about something like film or audio or music or stop motion animation, animation sorry. So it's, it's very interesting what you do. Mm. So obviously you have kind of an idea of how all this works. So I'm going to go back to, to the very start and ask, what inspired you as a child creatively with films and music and audio? And uh, well, I didn't have the competency or the confidence to do it then, and technology has made that all very possible. So, you know, in a lot of today, we tend to be consumers and we're really we should be creators. And so that's using technology like a phone or a tablet uh, I wish I had I had that because I, I didn't have access to it, but I was always thinking ideas or writing or drawing. Or, uh, and so when, when technology, particularly in the last 15 years probably, uh, picking up an instrument was how I started because that was how I got involved in telling the stories. But technology opened, blew open the door because there's so much you can do with a smartphone or a tablet. There can, really is. It's like amazing. It's like Harry Potter, you got your wand. In real life, you got your phone. Being, like you can yeah. do anything with this. Yeah. So yeah. Use it for good. Yeah, don't use it for bad, guys. Don't okay. become a, don't become a phone Voldemort or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, technology really has changed a lot of things in education and obviously with film. For example, I started like thinking about doing kind of film projects and stuff with stuff like Fire Alpaca and Clipchamp, just little apps like that, and yeah. that I just found in the middle of nowhere and thought, I'll give you this a go. And then stuff like Band Lab and Cakewalk, that's when I wanted to start making music. Spotify for podcasters, apps like that, that's how I do the podcast. So there's apps for everything nowadays. So I see that that is how you started in all of this started to help people make films and music that one of the main reasons is technology so as i said you teach about music audio and stop music motion i i keep saying that and video that's a tricky one yeah yeah but as my final question why do you feel this is important i think because it's it's important for our own self uh worth i think that you know, when I was a kid, as you're saying, um, I, I always, I loved, I connected with ballad songs and traditional songs because they had a story and I liked punk music because it had a story. You like things with stories. Yeah, punk music has great stories too. Yeah. Like, Sip Little Fingers, all of those is about politics and stuff like. A hundred percent, yes. A, a band I loved too, uh, growing up, it was Sip Little Fingers. And um, so you kind of think, how could I do that so the way for me to do that was to learn guitar and it was a great thing it's it's brilliant but and I would recommend anyone to experiment you don't have to and yeah. like that. you don't have to be brilliant all you need is a couple of chords and folk music and yeah so Ramones used three chords mm -hmm. in I think their whole career well it wouldn't be far off the modest yeah I think it was a lot of their <laughs> albums they used the three chords but it was yeah. on every song they used only three chords they, they didn't do more well. Yeah, really and, and they use them brilliantly. It feels <laughs> like all different chords throughout the whole thing. But yeah. that just shows how good the Ramones are and how good a person can be if they pick up a guitar and just start yeah. jamming on it. Just jam. But technology yeah. too, but it's so easy to get distracted. And so what we say is 
technology is great. It's a tool. I was making stop motion animation with old cameras. Uh, so I was doing that. I was using the technology that was around, but I've always been interested in it. And I've always been interested in I'm saying storytelling. So when I was a kid, I always had a camera of some sort or a video and always captured stories like interviewed grandparents yeah. or interviewed neighbors or friends. I love that idea. Still do that. So that that's use what you've got. Yeah, that it's there. Don't mm. waste it. It kind of reminds me of a TV show called the Goldbergs, which is about a kid called Adam Goldberg and he catches everything on his video um, kind yeah. of tape thing. And uh, it's all about his life story. But he captures everything on like VHS tapes. <laughs> and, and it's really cool because it's made out that Adam t- takes it, but it's actually a TV show, but it's all based off the real Adam F. Goldberg's life. So that's really interesting. And I like the idea of capturing your life in a video camera because it can be very nice to look back on it. Yeah. So I well, think capturing other people's lives is interesting. Yeah, you make a great point there. So I can it's always nice to look back or think about somebody's life or your own. So yeah, that's very interesting. And it's something that a lot of people do or used to do actually. It's something that people are stopping doing now. So yeah. it's something it's something that you should, if you don't do it, think about it because even just picking up that little Instax camera in like Smith's or somewhere can get you on your journey to becoming a photographer or getting into the whole side of photography. Um, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Yeah. Go and play, have fun. Exactly, exactly. Now, I'm, I feel really upset that I'm saying this, but I'm out of questions. I've asked That's every fun. single one and you've <laughs> answered them brilliantly. And I've learned a lot throughout this interview. So I want to thank you so much, Peter, for joining me on my podcast. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for asking me and good luck with it all. And I hope uh, we cross paths again. I hope so too, Peter. Bye. Thank you.